Hello, today we are going to discuss on obstructive sleep apnea syndrome. Uh, coming to introduction, sleep is defined as reversible behavioral state of perceptual disengagement and unresponsiveness to surrounding. It has two stages. One is REM sleep, which accounts for 20% of sleep phases, also called as rapid eye movement sleep. There will be alert mind and relaxed body. And even REM sleep accounts for 80% of all sleep phases and there will be relaxed mind and active body. Uh, OS is often considered as a REM dominant disorder. As you know from stages, there will be relaxed body and alert mind in case of REM sleep. Relaxed body leads to muscle relaxation and basically when there is relaxation of muscles in the level of tongue or in the level of pharynx or in the level of nose, especially in the post posterior part, that leads to sleep apnea syndrome. Apnea is defined as cessation of breathing from nose and mouth for more than 10 seconds. It can again be classified as obstructive type in which the chest wall moves, central type the chest wall doesn't move and mixed type there will be partial movement of the chest wall. Hypopnea is defined as decreased airflow less than 50% from baseline with more than 4% oxygen desaturation and arousal. As you know when there is oxygen desaturation there will be arousal. Uh, this is the graph that shows obstructive apnea, mixed apnea, central apnea and hypopnea. You can see different uh, different conditions. In case of obstructive apnea, there will be no airflow but there is respiratory effort will be still continuing. In mixed apnea, there will be no airflow but respiratory effort partly uh, will be there. In case of central apnea, there will be no airflow and there will be no respiratory effort. In hypopnea, there will be diminished airflow with desaturation. So these are the different graphical pictures of sleep different types of apnea patterns. The apnea hypopnea index is used to indicate the severity of sleep apnea. It is represented by the number of apnea and hypopnea events per hour of sleep. So OS is defined as AHI less than more than 5. So when the person has up to 5 episodes of apnea hypopnea per hour it is also taken as normal. It can be graded as mild when there is 5 to 14 episodes of AHI, moderate 15 to 29 and severe more than 30. It signifies that in case of severe hypopnea apnea, there will be around uh, one episode of hypopnea for two minutes of sleep. Coming to pathophysiology of apnea, sleep apnea syndrome, it is incomplete understood, but hypothesis is that during REM sleep, there will be collapse in the upper airway, basically at the level of pharynx which is due to defecting pharyngeal dilator muscles activity and anatomical abnormalities already described which leads to hypoxia. Again when the patient hypoxia there will be arousal and upper airway collapse improves and patient sleeps again. So during sleep airway again collapses leading to hypoxia and arousal. Multiple arousals result in poor quality of sleep and daytime sleepiness. Chronic repeated hypoxia leads to hypohemodynamic complications like pulmonary hypertension, systemic hypertension, coronary artery disease, CBA and congestive cardiac failure. As you can see the level of obstruction happens in different levels. One is nose, next is in the uh, oropharynx and mouth and next is at the level of larynx also. So anatomical abnormalities like septal deviation, turbinate hypertrophy, nasal polyps, adenoid hypertrophy are common in the nose. So elongation of soft palate and uvula, tonsillar hypertrophy, macroglossia, retrognathia and rugae at the posterior pharyngeal wall they are commonly found in the oropharynx and the oral cavity and omega sept epiglottis like laryngeal trichal isthmus and laryngotracheal isthmus are found in the upper uh, part of the larynx in the larynx basically when the child develops acute laryngo uh, the laryngeal inflammations or congenital anomalies. Symptoms are daytime Symptoms like sleepiness, morning fatigue, morning headache are common. With cognitive impairment, heartburn, depression, impotence, and xerostomy also are common because the patient has to breathe from the mouth during night time. So night time there will be snoring and observed gaping, gasping or apnea or choking by the bed partner. Repeated waking, waking at night, nocturnal sweating and nocturnal immunosis are also not uncommon. Typical syndromic patient is having old age, male patient obese with BMI of more than 30, thick short neck more than 17 inch, hypertension, thyromegaly, basically having hypothyroid problems, 
large bulky tongue or tonsils fat person nasal obstruction which are, might be anatomical obstruction like dns or nasal polyps or inflammation the repeating edema of the uh, legs probably when the patient is towards hypothyroidism then disproportionate anatomy of the body as you can see this patient has is having disproportionate proportionate body anatomy so this is the typical picture how to manage basically approach has to be by detailed history to involve the bed partner because you know when the patient is in uh, apnea they don't know what is happening with them but the bed partner knows the patient is also going to gasping in sleep history basically bedtime have to be uh, asked at what time does the patient go, go to bed you know alcohol or cigarette abuse when the patient uses alcohol at night and then there is high chance of sleep apnea basically respiratory difficulty at night body position or snoring when the uh, is the position of the patient as it's supine or it's lateral or prone then snoring is there a snoring or not then arousal and apnea time by time then we have to assess daytime sleepiness also by different scales one is if worth sleepiness scale and stanford sleepiness scales uh, so patient basically when the patient gets chance to sleep at daytime the patient sleeps suppose even the subkeeper can sleep on the uh, chair itself examination we have to see for bmi and bp in the examination enterinoscopy is uh, important we have to see dns turbinal hypertrophy polyps or mass orifices by you have to see tongue size of the tongue and it is big or like that tonsils bigger size uvula and pharyngeal valves elongated uvula and rugae in the posterior pharyngeal valve are common in patients with uh, sleep apnea syndrome neck diameter has to be seen basically the circumference of around more than 17 inch or thyromegaly and cbs examination when the patient is having some uh, abnormalities of the cardiovascular system Specific nasal pharyngoscopy with Muller's maneuver is to assess the airway collapse. This is a Muller's maneuver, as you can see. After a forced expiration, an attempt at inspiration is made with closed mouth and nose, so-called reserve reverse valsalva. And this is a normal airway. You can see it's a uh, normal airway. In bulky base of tongue. This is the bulky base of tongue can be visualized here, which is decreasing the airway. So before Muller's maneuver, this you can see this is the uh, larynx, which is larynx inlet. And after Muller's maneuver, there is airway obstruction over here so this is the obstructive airway you can see there investigations are polysomnography which is gold standard investigation in case of osa it is done in a sleep lab the measures are eeg eog or emg so electroencephalogram electroocular or electromyogram ecg blood pressure position of patient movement of chest and abdomen has to be seen at night especially when the patient is in icu or sleep lab then air flow oxygen saturation and esophageal pressure also has to be uh, measured cephalometry is usually not performed nowadays so we can see in nat tongue and soft palate uh, you can see here then inferior displaced hyoid bone okay hyoid bone is in inferior displaced then inferior displacement of the mandibular body you can see displaced mandibular body and reduced oropharyngeal and hypopharyngeal airway can be seen over here so this is a measurement of the uh, head cephalometry anatomical respectors like x-ray ct scan mri fluoroscopy acoustic reflex can be performed by they can assess the anatomical risk multiple sleep pregnancy test has to be performed sometimes to document daytime sleepiness and subject is asked to sleep four to five times in a day every two hours the differential diagnosis is primary snoring so in this case patient just snores and there will be no apnea syndrome when there is mild upper airway obstruction basically when the patient has uh, high bmi then RDI will be less than 5 and there will be no daytime sleepiness. Upper airway resistance syndrome is defined as when there is a moderate upper airway obstruction, RDI less than 5, arousal index is more than 15 and excessive negative intrathoracic pressure will be there and daytime sleepiness occurs. There are different variations of different diagnosis of sleepiness syndrome. How to treat general treatment? just aims to weight reduction person has to reduce weight when the person is uh, fat then sleep hygiene has to be maintained by ele elevate the heading at end of the trip bed at night time avoid alcohol and cigarettes at night time and avoid lying supine for that we can do like a uh, tennis ball can be kept at the t-shirt bag so person cannot sleep in the supine position person has to change his position positive airway pressure device they are very important devices which are usually used by the patients with uh, sleep apnea syndrome 
कंटिन्यूस पॉजिटिव एयर प्रेशर ऑफ बाइपेजिक और ऑटोमेटर दे आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड पोजिशनिंग डिवाइस लाइक मैंडिबुलर एडवांसमेंट डिवाइस एंड टॉन्ग रिटेनिंग डिवाइस कैन बी यूज सो दिस इज द नेजल सी पी एपी एज यू कैन सी दिस इज द कंटिन्यूस पॉजिटिव एयर प्रेशर विच इज फर्स्ट टाइम ट्रीटमेंट विद मोर देन अराउंड हंड्रेड परसेंट इफिकेसी विच इज गोल्ड स्टैंडर्ड मेडिकल ट्रीटमेंट एंड प्रेशर मोस्ट इंडिविजुअली टाइटेड सो एडवर्स इफेक्ट्स आर नोइज मास्क डिसकम्फर्ट क्लस्टर फो बिया कम्प्लाइंस इज लो अराउंड फिफ्टी पर्सेंट कम्प्लाइंस ओनली सो दिस इज द गोल्ड स्टैंडर्ड सो इन दिशन एज कंटिन्यूस पॉजिटिव एयर प्रेशर थ्रू द थ्रू द नोज ड्यूरिंग स्लीप सो इज द एपनिक एपिसोड देर बी एपनिया एंड नेजल सी पी एपी देर बी कंटिन्यूस पॉजिटिव एयर प्रेशर सो देर बी नो एयर वे कोलैप्स ओके सो एयर वे विल बी ओपन सो इन दिस केस द पेशेंट्स एयर वे हेज बीन कोलैप्स ओवर हेयर यू कैन सी द कोलैप्स एयर वे पेशेंट इज ड्रिंग फ्रॉम द माउथ सो दिस इज द कम्प्रोमाइज एयर वे ओवर यू कैन सी दिस इज कम्प्रोमाइज एयर वे एंड दिस इज ओरल अप्लायंस सोल्यूशन सो इन द पेशेंट इज अप्लाइंग ओरल अप्लायसेस देन एट इज द पेशेंट इज ब्रीदिंग फ्रॉम हेयर सो दिस पुल्स द टंग अप और पुल्स द टीथ अप रियली दिस इज द डिफरेंट मैंडल एडवांसमेंट डिवाइस एंड टंग रिटेनिंग डिवाइसेस सर्जिकल ट्रीटमेंट फॉर स्लीप बाई नेजल सर्जरी पैलेटर सर्जरी वन द रिफेक्ट इज इन द पैलेट टॉन्ग बेस्ट सर्जरी मेडिकल फिशल सर्जरी एंड ट्राइगोस्टोमी पैलेटर सर्जरी बाई फार इज द मोस्ट कॉमनली परफॉर्म सर्जरी फॉर स्लीप एपनिया सिंड्रोम नेजल सर्जरी लाइक रियोरिटी सफिस अलोन बिकॉज देर इज नॉट ओनली द कॉज इन द नोज द देर लिव स्नोरिंग मोर देन एपनिया द कैन बी मैनेज बाई ऑफिस रेडियो फ्रिक्वेंसी टॉर्मिट एवलेशन द टॉर्मिट आर लार्ज सेफ्टी टॉर्मिट प्लास्टिव एंड देर इज डिविएशन ऑफ द सेफ्टम एंड बिग टॉर्मिनेट्स Polypectomy and there is nasal polyp, nasal valve reconstruction, adenoidectomy, and nasal mass excision also can be performed when there is mass in the nose. Then uvular uh, palato pharyngoplasty is the. Then coming to palatal surgeries, UPPB uvular palato pharyngoplasty is the gold standard surgery. is basically most often surgery for uh, the sleep apnea syndrome. Others like these are assisted. Uvular palatoplasty, radio frequency uvular palatoplasty, uvular palatal flap repair, lateral pharyngotomy, pharyngoplasty, and transpalatal advancement pharyngoplasty also can be performed. This uvular palato pharyngoplasty most commonly done procedure. The complications are hemorrhage, stenosis, velopharyngeal incompetence are the complications. So this is uvular palato pharyngoplasty. The uvula is removed, the tonsils are removed, okay, and the pharyngoplasty is done. टोसिलेशन सोट This is the different areas in soft palate and in the palate. So different ways of puncture are there. So the basic aim of radio frequency palate ablation is to make the respiratory area, breathing area, bigger one. So lateral pharyngoplasty again. The lateral pharyng lateral pharynx the tonsils are removed and the lateral pharyngeal band, the the tonsils are sutured. Internal tonsil pil posterior tonsil pilus are sutured and the respiratory area is increased. So most commonly, the surgery is performed in the palate. Uvula flap, then uvula is, is partly caught, and it is it is uh, sutured in the soft palate. Tongue process procedure like radio frequency tongue ablation again. The area of the uh, big uh, bulk in the tongue is removed by radio frequency ablation. The lingual tonsils removal, lingual plasty, and tongue base suspension and hyoid myotomy and bands are the common procedures performed in, in the tongue base. In lingual plasty, suppose when there is uh, Bulky tongue in the posterior part. We can remove some part of the tongue in the basin, and we can suture. Or we can use radio frequency ablation again to make the airway uh, better. So you can see here we cannot see the larynx totally. We can we have to remove the tissue from here, and here we can see the larynx, the breathing larynx easily. This is the basic aim of making the respiratory area larger. Then tongue suspension. The tongue is suspended. So. This is the tongue suspension procedure in the high, in the mandible, so to make the airway better. 
Major facial procedures like genioglossal advancement and higher myotomy are also performed. The basic aim is to make again to make the respiratory area bigger. So they are uh, used when, there is, when the patient is having genioglossal problems and hyoid problems, being large hyoid or large mandible, anteriorly producing mandible. In major facial procedures. And trigastomy is the last resort in treatment failure cases. The aim of trigastomy is just to uh, as to help the patient breathing from the from the trachea. Okay, so when there is trigastomy, then patient doesn't require breathing from the oral cavity, mouth or nose. So there will be uh, no apnea, no apneic episodes because patient can breathe from directly from the trachea. If there is trigastomy. What are the complications of OSA? They are cystic hypertension, systemic hypertension, chronic coronary artery disease, congestive heart failure, arrhythmias, pulmonary hypertension, CVA, risk accidents when the patient basically sleeps at daytime, the marital discord in due to importance, professional setbacks, depression, importance, and sudden death also can happen in case of CVP syndrome. Thank you so much. Subscribe my channel for further videos. Thank you.